G'day everyone, thank you for tuning in. Another cold, brisk morning here this morning, but I've got a bit of a surprise for you. No, it's not working on the Sun server. It's teardown time. We haven't done one of these for a while, have we? But if you have a look at the state of the garage, I've got a fair bit to start tearing down, and uh, I thought we'd end up basically starting with this HP Procurve fast ethernet switch. Now I've done a profile on this, uh, which I'll put in, uh, I'll put a link to it, I'm sorry, in the description below. But I thought we'd start tearing it down. I need to make some space. I've already started uh, undoing the screws and I thought, geez, it's a perfect candidate for a teardown. It has ceased to work and um, basically is a, uh, just a great big paperweight now. Bit of, uh, bit of bit of a um, quick uh, refresher on this. This was the switch that uh, my friend got from Channel 9 here in Melbourne. And the idea being is that you could tie them all together or you could segment them if you had uh, multiple, um, multiple networks or multiple isolated networks that had um, very little in common until it got to the outside world and um, it has stopped working so I thought we would uh, pull apart and um, have a look let's get the uh, front console panel out first as you can see there there's the interface now it can be argued and I'll talk about this shortly but it's a very similar setup with this to what could be loosely be described as a uh, old school VME backplane setup. Alright, so this is the control panel. You can see here we've got a LSI control chip there. Got an Intel 960 PROC chip. That's probably the ROM. That'll be the processor. Some uh, status lights there. I don't need any of these at the moment. I've got plenty of them. Some. Uh, all right. Capacitors, inductors, inductors. Made in Singapore. Let's get the next card out. I've done these cards before, as you can see there, they're all Broadcom control chips. Um, the unfortunate thing with this, what's, uh, what's ended up happening is that there is no longer, um, it no longer boots. All these cards are pretty much the same, as you can see. Oh! All the same. I'll just throw them in. Being all metal and everything with this. I don't think it a ton. Oh, didn't get that one out properly. Now I'm going to show you what I mean by it could be... You could call it... It's not exactly the same um, before the purists get stuck into me. It's not exactly the same. But the theory behind it is very similar to a VME style backplane. You can see there, chips. It's got a, obviously the HP control chip and then uh, the Broadcon chips. Now as I said, the RJ45s on this were 10100 and the fiber link was gigabit fiber. And you could basically not much really to it really is there when you think about it when these things were out these were really expensive really expensive and um, you know you, you, you these were a real enterprise style rack mountable um, network switch so we'll get the fiber link one out now, actually I'll save these because I need these. 
couple of mine in the Cisco switch that I've got uh, knackered. I'll just uh, get these out. Bit of a quick tear down this one, but I've got to start uh, making some space because I can no longer work in the workshop. Okay. So here's the fibre, and as you can see there are four fibre links, it is, it's only a hundred base fibre channel, this must be a very early generation fibre, I thought it was gigabit, my apologies, there's our Broadcom and HP chips, got some uh, custom chips there. Okay, so that's got that part of it down. Now, if you look at these, they're all very similar to a PCI. But if you want to talk about it in a simplistic point of view, it is extremely similar to a VME backplane. Meaning that everything plugs into a circuit board. Now, it's not in a traditional sense a VME backplane. I realise that but it was just an easy way of um, describing it. The next thing to do, I guess, will be to spin it around. I can go in the bin. We'll get the uh, power supply out, I think's the next thing to do. Oh, that was close. That was nearly feet. Ooh. Yeah, this power supply doesn't look much good either. We might tear that down shortly as well. Okay, tip it on its end. We have three fans there for cooling. Definitely salvage these fans though. Get them out. They might be... Uh, Handy fans to hang on to, in case fan blows out or power supply fan blows out. You probably can't see what I'm doing there, can you? Oh, for God's sake. Got to be admittable that uh, back in the day these switches were... Pretty good switches, actually. The Pro Curve stuff from HP was reasonably good, but uh, I'm not sure it's as good nowadays as what it used to be. Well, I'll be brutally honest. I don't think things these days are made to last like they used to. Any stretch of the imagination. It's all about uh, getting the latest out as quickly as possible. Okay. Now, okay, so we're going to take that out from the front. All right, so there it is there. I'm going to try and unplug that. Not a lot of room in here, believe me, not with my big fat fingers. Right, once you get the fan module out, there's the fan module. You almost use that for a really big custom cooling rig, couldn't you? A water cooling rig or something. Water cooling. Theoretically, it's what I should use, but uh, I don't actually at the moment need a water cooled rig because what I'm doing nowadays more so nowadays is I don't it was interesting because I was watching a video uh, last night on advantages and disadvantages of water cooling and I can see the merit in it no that's not the right size but I can't justify the price and the time to convert I know it's just the old school in me 
I've got the right one now. These are a weird Allen key. Did I get it? I did get it. There we go. I'll get this out. I don't need any more screws. I've got enough bloody Allen keys and Phillips head and flathead screws to sink a ship at the moment. The, um, these switches were designed that if, if, if it did fall apart on you, you know, something, you know, decided to fuck up catastrophically or, or just fall over, being in a modular design, you could replace just about everything. The back plane, um, control board, we've got a... A few bits and pieces down there. You know, it all could be replaceable. Mm. Some of the stuff out there today is not modular. A lot of it's just hard line. And so you uh, you put up with it. All right. So, let's see if we can get this out. There we go. All right, so there's the back plane. Like I said, it, it you could loosely call it very similar to a VME-style... Um, back plane, centre plane, whatever you want to call it, because all the cards plug onto this. So while in the traditional sense it is not a VME back plane, as I know a VME, but, you know, we'll, we'll call it similar to a VME back plane because it is, you know, everything plugs onto this and this talks to all the cards. We've got some uh, nice big MOSFET transistor there. Funnily enough, no heat sink on it. It'll be a uh, comms chip there, I think you'll find. Not much really to it. And we're, uh, we're complete, pretty much. For those that want the details, there are plenty of people out there always looking for details. It, it was a... Uh, not sure where the model number is. Made in Singapore, I know that. Now, this is what always... I, I, I get the giggle here. No operatable... No operator service or parts inside. Refer to servicing to a qualified personnel. Now... <laughs> I always giggle about that because normally... Only qualified personnel would actually try and fix these things because, no offence, your average Joe Blow probably wouldn't know what he was looking at. I'll get a giggle out of that, but there you go. Tear down of a HP Pro Curve. Uh, what is it? J412A. Ethernet switch. Fully recommendable. Anyway, thanks for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, share. Check out Patreon and Facebook and Instagram. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment and subscribe. Cheers.